Rolling. And we are live. Hello, everybody. It's your old pal, Rob. And today, oh, and today, <laughs> we have Candace Harris, new Hello. member to the Board Game Geek team. So on behalf of everybody, I'd like to do this on video so everybody sees it. Welcome to the best team out there, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be on the best team. <laughs> and, 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 and let me tell you something, it's well-deserved. Um, you know, we had a chance to meet, uh, we finally met each other actually uh, at, at the Board Game Geek retreat. Retreat, yep, back in January. I, I, I want to get to that, but <laughs> I, I, I want to talk a little bit about that the dinner we had because one of the reasons you're on the show is because num number one, the dinner that you and I spent together, and I, I think we talked for like 20, 40 minutes because yeah, yeah. It, took, it took forever to feed like 35 people. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're the one table that, yeah, table for 35, please. Yeah, right. <laughs> we talk but, about games. <laughs> but the thing I always wanted to, to find out and I wanted to know, okay, was how did you end up getting to that retreat? <laughs> uh, who who you was it through Lincoln? Uh, you know how how did yeah. that whole association go? And tell yeah. us a little bit about about you. Yeah, so so it was through Lincoln. Um, I was well. I mean, I guess I guess if you didn't read the announcement, I kind of uh, jumped into this hobby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm, the, I'm the one person that didn't do it. <laughs> and and you know how busy I've been. Yeah. So, so it was like, oh, they finally announced her. Good. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not on the front page, but I didn't even bother to read. It. But go ahead, fire, fire away. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So um, I got into the hobby a little over two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I was pretty much I was playing actively in bands whew, for like fourteen years or so, and I got to a point from like just always being the band leader and dealing with like different personnel issues here and there um, where playing music kind of was like, I need to take a break from this um, or at least like playing in a band. Like I need to just kind of like step down. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew you and, like and, <laughs> and from there kind of like taking a hiatus from, um, thank you, <laughs> for, um, from taking a hiatus from music, I ended up, kind of jumping into board gaming and I had always played board games growing up with my family mm -hmm. and like even hosting friends to have little game nights here and there you know apples to apples whatever uh pit and then <laughs> at some at some point somebody introduced me to Dixit which was a game changer but mm -hmm. I still wasn't like fully immersed in the hobby um right. it wasn't until my birthday two years ago um when my uh, significant other Matt ended up getting me Mysterium. And we opened Mysterium, we tried to start playing it, and they were like, we just weren't quite grasping the rules. Mm -hmm. So we ended up like, maybe there's a video on YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. And at that point, I think it was Will Wheaton's tabletop that I started watching first. And I was just like, this is awesome. And then you know how YouTube would just, shows you other things related videos i started seeing all these different games and i just got like super into it so i started watching videos learning about games buying games then saying hey friends like come over come hang and like play these games um and i pretty much uh like from there just kind of like went down the rabbit hole i was also kind of taking a break from social media um, cause I was finding, you know, yeah, like I was finding, I was one of those people who are just like, check my phone, Instagram, Facebook, you know? Um, and I was just like, whoa, like, this is like, how much time is this taking out of my life? Like every day. And I was just like, I don't want to do that. I want to like sit in a room with people, use our brains together, be social. And I just kind of like got hooked on that and you know, and then just discovering new games just gets me excited because I'm just like, somebody like thought to like create this, the mechanics, like the design, the theme, and I'm just, I'm so fascinated by it and just how many games exist and keep continuing to come out. 
year after year. And I'm like, where have I been <laughs> the past, like, however many years, like missing out on this. So I just kind of like dove in um, and got super into it. It was, mm -hmm. it was just about a year ago. Um, I was at a convention with some friends and um, my friend Joe pulled me into a game of PAX Renaissance. At, <laughs> it was about like quarter of midnight and he was like, come on, let's buy this. And I'm like, okay, okay, sure. You know, and we played PAX Renaissance and he just kind of like high level, cause just, there's a lot going on. I don't know if you played it, Rob. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just was like, taught me enough to like get going. And at some point I thought I was even going to win, but I was playing with two experienced players. So <laughs> they, they shut it down. Um, but like, I couldn't stop thinking about that game. And then I like had to track down a copy of it. And that's kind of like how I got into the historical side of gaming. Mm -hmm. But, um, but jumping back to the BGG thing, um, I was at a convention in Burbank, um, last year in April. Okay. And, um, I kind of like brushed shoulders with Lincoln. And then I ended up actually um, meeting Nikki, um, cause I think Lincoln had left. Um, and, uh, my, uh, good friend, Jennifer Schlickburn was like, Hey, Hey, talk to these guys, you know, see if you can get on game night. And, you know, so talk to Nikki for a while. And, um, a couple months later, I got an email, uh, from Lincoln saying, Hey, like we want to have you on game night. And I ended up going on game night. And go ahead. No, no, no. What I was going to say, because you're out now, you, you've been out in LA your whole life, right? That area? No, 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 no. no. I'm actually from Abington, Pennsylvania, the suburbs outside of Philly. Well, get out of here. Yeah, you're, I'm you're East, East Coast. Coast girl. I'm East Coast, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm originally from Connecticut, but now I'm in Florida. Oh, nice. I, yeah. have, I have a couple of good friends from Connecticut who actually live out here now. Oh, um, but go. yeah, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, from the East Coast. I moved out to LA in 2009. So it's okay. been just like almost almost eleven years. Wow, this October. Um, how, do you, how do you like it out there? I love it. Do you? I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm so happy that I was like raised where I was and mm -hmm. everything. And but like, yeah, I've still I've been in honeymoon stage with um, with LA and just California in general, like since I moved here. And I just like every once in a while we'll go for a walk or a bike ride. And I'm like, I live here. <laughs> Cause Did, like the, the weather, just the proximity to the beaches. Do you miss the seasons at all? <laughs> um, like fall, like I, I, bet, I bet you fall, of course. Fall is like one of my favorites. And, yeah. you know, we still have family in, in Philly and friends. So we go back there a, a fair deal. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, I mean, not overall, not overall, because I, I love snow, though. So what we'll do is we like to travel to cold places right. in the winter just to, like, get some get some snow action, but then come back to the sunshine and palm yeah, trees. Yeah, because <laughs> instead, of dealing, instead of dealing with, you know, five, six months of it, yeah, eh, we'll go for a week. Yeah, you see it, like, even, I mean, even here's another beautiful thing about California uh, we spent uh, Thanksgiving in Big Bear, mm -hmm. uh, which is like oh. two hours away in the mountains, mm -hmm. and it and we ended up being snowed in for all <laughs> of Thanksgiving weekend. It was gorgeous, and then it was like we go home, and it's sunny and seventy five. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the one thing I love about Florida is I could wear shorts every day. I, I, yeah, I, think, I, yeah. I think I have like one or two pairs of pants in case I have to go out. But, you, but, but you have the you have the humidity there though, right? Oh god, yeah. And hurricanes yeah. and alligators yeah. and snakes and oh and all kinds of other things. You know, <laughs> you, you you never know. <laughs> but you know, every place has its ups and downs. Yeah, uh, yeah. We actually have a question. What did you do music wise, Candace? I used to play E alto and tenor saxophone, and I loved doing that. Nice. Said David Martins. Nice. Um my primary instrument is drums. So I'm a percussionist. I was playing, I started playing drums in school in fourth grade mm -hmm. and my parents were just like, cool with it. 
And um, I was actually just saying um, in an interview I did like about how in the 90s, how I don't think many parents would encourage their daughter to play drums. So I really appreciate that about my parents is that like they let me do that and they like encouraged me to just kind of like do whatever I want and didn't say like, well, why don't you play violin or piano or flute? You know, like they're mm -hmm. like, you go girl, play the drums, you know? So, um, so yeah, I play drums uh, primarily and um, I also play guitar, but I consider myself a very mediocre guitarist. Okay. Um, I just did it at, I started learning at some point because I wanted to write music. And so um, any of any of my bandmates would tell you whenever I write an idea, my guitar riffs are terrible, but I'm just like, you guys get the idea. Make it make it cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so well, I just me, play guitar a little. Let me ask you a quick question here. Yeah. Does you, you know, reading music is is it's just hard. OK, yeah. I, I, it's not it's not for everybody. Yeah. Does that kind of background help you with some of these complex rules? You know, especially yeah. when we start talking about, you know, games like Labyrinth, which we'll talk about uh, soon enough, yeah. and some of the other things that 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 um that have interested you. Did you do you find that you're able to absorb things a lot easier because of your your musical background? You know, I I never really even thought about that. But I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think there's any direct correlation there because mm -hmm. I mean, especially like, I mean, in school, I read music as a percussionist, like playing in orchestra and marching band and everything like that. And even, even jazz band, um, you read some charts, but like most of my adult life I've played in rock bands. So I'm not reading music. I'm just I'm writing music, you know, mm -hmm. I'm writing parts, um, but I'm not like really like reading sheet music. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that is uh, related at all. Okay. Uh, Nathaniel has a question. Phil Eklund was jumping into the deep end. What other historical games do you play and what do you think makes them historical? Ah, well, let's see. Um, I love Twilight Struggle. Um, okay. I've played Sekigahara, Unification of Japan. Um, that's another, another historical another one. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I, I have a lot of games that I have not played yet. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Cuba Libre is on my shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, Freedom, the Underground Railroad I've played. Um, what do I think makes them historical is that they're just based on some chunk, some aspect of history. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually kind of what I find really fascinating because in, when I was in high school and college, like I was not into history. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was the student who knew how to get the A, like study what I need to get that A, but I wasn't really into it and I didn't, really pay attention enough to it. So I feel like now as an adult, I'm, I'm really fascinated by like the, the mechanics and like the little nuggets of history that you learn. And I actually, it's, it's kind of <laughs> some, some point later down the line, I want to uh, design a historical board game. That's interesting. Yeah, and, and a matter of fact, uh, we were talking before the show, but I'll get I'll get to it. Uh, one of, one of the things I, I wanted to mention was, you know, and and one of the reasons I, I I had you here is we got a chance to, like I said, meet at that retreat, right? And we we sat down to dinner, and uh, you know, and we started talking, and we just had like this instant thing, which yeah. was really really uh, interesting and how you just started throwing out all these war games and i'm going <laughs> oh hell yeah oh hell yeah <laughs> you know and, 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 and it, it was kind of like it, it was in that moment i said you know something i've got to have her on more pieces because you know war gaming gets this really bad rap that yeah. it's just full of old guys like myself yeah okay yeah. but they don't understand that there's a broad appeal out there Absolutely. it's just they're not coming forward. And I think yeah. sometimes they feel shut out a little bit. Now you, you, you talked about, um, 
Labyrinth. You, you've got a chance to play Labyrinth. 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 No, it's, no, no. I, I haven't yet. I, I'm getting it probably next week. I just, um, you know, I would say like a lot of things, like if you would have asked me a year and a half ago if I would have Twilight Struggle on my shelf, I probably would have been like, no, I'm not into that. Until I like try one and then I like I I get really into it. Yeah. Um, so I just recently um I'm trying to think what kind of put Labyrinth on my radar. Um it's, I'm it's, always like looking into the coin games. Yeah, a the lot. coin the coin games are ridiculous. Yeah, and I think somehow I just yeah, I, I had seen that game. I had uh, you see it everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. But I just like didn't know much about it. I was like a little bit intimidated. And then, like, as I start, like, watching, you know, reading some reviews, watching videos, I'm like, this actually looks like real, like a really good game. And wow. um, it, it is a tremendous experience. And I can tell you coming up is twi um, Imperial Struggle. So if oh, you like. I, if you I got like, that on pre-order, Rob. You got it on. <laughs> I got that, that on pre-order. Yeah. That's my girl. That's my girl. I, <laughs> I did. I did a run through of it. It's mm -hmm. just an absolutely fascinating masterpiece in the fact of what it does and how it does it. The Cold War. I mean, you knew that. Okay, all you're trying to do is prevent nuclear war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you're talking about one of the greatest rivalries of all time, okay, through the history of man, yeah. you know, the the British and the French. Okay, and their complete power struggle over a hundred years and yeah. four wars in between that, and how it takes peacetime and takes that political intrigue. Yeah. Okay, and <laughs> just twit, you know, and and you're making all these certain moves, and then you come to the war time. Okay, and yeah. you only have a certain amount of of balance. Uh, depending on that particular time period, maybe the French yeah. were stronger during one war, um, or, or or the British were stronger to another point, and how you tried to survive that and create different kinds of chaos, and then come out of it into That's another awesome. peace time for a while, and then go into another war, and yeah. it just uh, does all these different things, and it does such a great job at doing it too. You have a video of it up, or you just played it. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, do you do you even watch my channel? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I actually, not enough. Not enough. No, I actually, uh, I, I think it was up last week or something like that. But I will check that out because I'm actually, yeah, I'm really pumped about that game. Another and, thing. Oh, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and I just like, I haven't really seen it in action yet. Um, mm -hmm. I just just from like reading the description, I'm like, yep, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bye. I, I mean, <laughs> And it's it's the smartest pur purchase that you could ever make yeah. because yeah. I'm promising you when you open that up and you see what I'm talking about, you're gonna go, man, that old fart was right. <laughs> <laughs> Get me excited. Yeah. Another thing that just popped up recently, and, I, and I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger here so you guys can okay. see. Because oh well, here, why don't I do it oh. right? There we go. <laughs> uh, no, I did that wow. wrong too. Now we're seeing your desktop. Yeah, geez. Ah, there we go. There's too many buttons here. Um, <laughs> this actually showed up on the doorstep uh, at the end of last week. Okay. And uh, you've heard of David Thompson, correct? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Undau uh, Undaunted Normandy? Yes. 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 Uh, uh, he, Have he it read the rules like two weeks ago. Still haven't gotten it to the table. I'm telling you, you are not going to be disappointed with that one. But this is oh, another yeah. game. He's also done another game that I really suggest for you, uh, Pavlov's House. Pavlov's House. Okay, and I haven't heard of that one. Castle Itter. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, they, they are so unique and so different that, you know, it, 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 the type of games that you like, it's really going to fall in your wheelhouse. Cool. Okay. And, and, and you know, like I was, I was trying to say um, earlier because I'm actually jumping ahead myself. But <laughs> this, this here takes a different approach to the Cold War, where you really like Twilight Struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I believe this is going to go out on the market very soon. And I haven't done a, the video for it yet because I'm trying to master this. But the really unique thing about this is it it, it takes two periods of time. 
Okay. So you, you're talking about you're talking about Europe during a very interesting time, um, and, and I, bl I believe it starts in the early '90s and it takes it almost to modern day, where European has uh, where, where Europe has the economic power, but its biggest problem. Mm is that it cannot make a decision amongst itself. Ah. <laughs> okay. And, and that's one of the things that when you take a look at what this game does, it, it basically hmm. utilizes that where Russia, because of, you know, after, you know, after Berlin wall fell, yeah, you know, it was fragmented. It doesn't have the resources or the money or the, the power, but it is a nation that will react quickly and hmm. swiftly and is mechanized and and will strike like a cobra okay so, so now this... oh go ahead sorry i didn't mean to cut you off is this a two player game or like oh it's a, it's a it's a two player game okay it's a two player game and you you, you decide which side you're going to be but you have like act 1 which is the new world order <clears throat> and that's after you know, everything's fragmented and so forth okay. and so on. And then act two is the cold war. Okay. Mm. The new cold, the new cold war yeah. that's, that's happened and, okay. and how this all, and it just, it just has this incredible, it, it plays mm. a little, plays a little euro -y, but, okay. but it also has this very strategic, and, and, and fantastic historical feel to it that will suck you in. And I'm telling you, Miss Kansas, there's you and I are going to have to play this live. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I actually, I saw, um, I went to Essen to spiel last year mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I had that on my list to, of games to check out there. And I think I just got like over, uh, you know, overwhelmed with a bunch of like, you know, all the games coming out. Mm -hmm. And I never went deeper with it, but I'm now I got to check it out again. See, you're putting up a video soon. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, okay. I just want to make sure I get everything down. Uh, what, I, I mean, I'm always going to make mistakes, yeah. but I try I'm not human. to make, fa yeah, I try not to make fatal mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll take, I'll take a what's that? Oh, you went out. Oh, what happened there? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Can't unmute. Your mic went out. Her mic went out. Ah. Ah, hold on. But, you know, again, like I, 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 I was trying to say that this is like an, an, an incredible game. And, you know, when you're trying to learn something like this, you want to represent a game like this correctly. Let's see if you can. Let me see. Ah, there you go. Your, your power went out. Okay, here I am. All right, there you go. Can you hear okay. me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like sometimes Bluetooth headphones, weird things happen. Oh, they, they, uh, of course. And it's in the middle when you're, you know, you're live and all that go other figure. Uh, yeah. I mean, go figure. But, but like, like I was trying to say, it, you, you know, it's, it, you really just, when, when you get something like this, you really want to make sure that you represent it because when you start going through it and you start to see the passion that's involved in a lot of games yeah, and, 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 and what goes into a lot of these things and how they all come together yeah, and what they're trying to portray, you want to make sure that you give a good, accurate feel to the audience so they understand what you're feeling as you're learning this. Absolutely. And, and, and see if that connects with them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God, you know that. And, and as a matter of fact, you were telling me that you're in the middle of designing a game, I believe. Yes, yes, I am. Um, the, the middle, some, somewhere in there. Um, I'm actually designing a music-related game. But oh, really? um, yeah, yeah, because I think like coming into the hobby um, as a musician, I felt like music-themed games are severely underrepresented. Mm -hmm. um, and uh <laughs> oh nice <laughs> yeah yeah have you ever played them have you ever played that game uh, uh the video game do you play video games at all no 
No, I'm not. I'm okay, not a big okay. video game. Person. That is actually a video game. Oh, okay. Making it into a board game, and it's like uh, it's like this unreal, cool, unreal board game. I I, I mean, unreal. Nice video game. <laughs> I, 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 everybody, everybody's like really curious of what he does with it because w- yeah. one of the things I'm going to tell you is when you play Undaunted, uh-huh. you're, you're going to play that and you're going to just, you're going to be in awe. And I bet you play it as much as you play Too Many Bones. Okay. Okay. I, 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 yeah. I will take my reputation on that. I, I love deck building. Um, it's, right. it's one of my favorite mechanics. So anytime you have deck building with like some kind of board game or other mechanics mixed in, it's... you know that's actually a fun game that we can do on BGG too. What? Um, Undaunted. We can do that because I have it and you have it. How would we do it? Yeah, yeah, because I have it and you have it. You would just have your own deck. Okay. And I could just when you place a card, I would just take and place those cards. Cool. And you would be able to look at it and we it would be all hidden. Now, I yeah. actually tried to play that game solo. Uh-huh. And, and I did it over the Christmas holiday. And it actually worked pretty good solo, believe it or not. Yeah. Even though it's 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 a strict two-player game. I played both sides and you, you tried And to it was still off. interesting. It was it was very interesting. Cool. It was very interesting how it all progressed and I I, I had such a blast at it. I'm telling you. Uh, all right, all right. I'll, 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 I'll rank that's that it one right up. there, isn't it? I yeah, think. yeah. It's uh, it's right there. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And he's actually got North Africa coming out pretty soon. I, I saw that. That looks pretty good. Um, have you played a, a few acres of snow? I'm sure you have. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. I, I mean, that has to be considered one of one of the greatest games. Uh, yeah ever made uh, i mean when you talk about a, a matter of fact i i had david on the show a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and he had mentioned that that game was such an influence to him ah cool okay? and 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 that game and, and and you know you just bringing that game up i mean gold, yeah. star, gold star for you <laughs> thank <laughs> you thank you i yeah i've only i've only played it once so far but Man, and I, I beat Matt, so he's afraid to play again. Oh, he's afraid to play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the funny thing about uh, about that game, it's one of those games that you play it, and then it just sticks with you afterwards for a day or two. Yeah. And you and 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 you're always thinking about it. You're always thinking about what you did and how you did it, yeah. and it's just one of those games that sticks with you, like um. You were talking about uh, the Freedom Railroad there. Yes. Academy Games. You look at all their games. I don't know how many games you have from them. I don't know either besides Freedom. What else have they done? Um, uh, they've done um, the Conflict of Heroes series, uh, mm-hmm. Storms of Steel, Awakening the Bear. Um, and they have solo aspects of it. But it, it's really a unique thing. And it's something that especially that I think you would like. Um, cool. Is, is that is 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 that you know you take a situation and you take these bunch of soldiers, okay, mm-hmm. and, and everybody thinks they can just sit behind a you know a chair like we're sitting here yeah. and move those pieces, and that they're just pieces of cardboard. But what you forget is that they are individuals; that they yeah. were people at one point. Yeah. And what he builds into the game is how people would react. I mean, if somebody starts shooting at you right now, you're ducking to the ground and you're yeah. hiding behind a quarter if you could. Right, and, right. You know, it's that kind of thing. That's now, awesome. I don't know if you know Kabuki Kid, but she's probably one of the most famous. I YouTubers. do know See, Kabuki Kid from, I think, either maybe our, our Gamma from BGG everywhere. stream or your your streams. <laughs> Uh, from everywhere. She, <laughs> she is embarrassed that she has never played a few acres of snow. None of my friends own it, so I would have to be the one to buy it. <laughs> and it's, it's out of print, too. Yeah, it's out of print. I yeah. had to, like, track down. I probably paid a little too much for it. <laughs> but was it worth it? Yes. 
No, okay. Absolutely. It's That's not leaving my collection. No. <laughs> it doesn't look like much is leaving your collection. But then, again, <laughs> but then again, you don't want to see the walls and yeah. walls and walls of games. And we have a garage here, so there, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but some, some that are being sold, so eventually. It's so hard. It's so hard to sell them too. Yeah, I know. Unless I know. you really don't like them, it's really hard to part. Yeah. With uh, let's see. We had a question here. Question: You are such a cheerful and emotional person. Has a gaming experience ever given darker emotions? Huh. That's a good question. And thank I you, Nathaniel. Um, well, let me think. Has there? Has there? I think what he's saying. Have you played and had a bad experience and just went, you know something? As nice as I am, boy, this is not fun. And boy, I, <laughs> I have had a bad experience, but it wasn't like too terrible. It was actually with um, Clank Legacy. There were like two games back to back where I died and did not get out and I didn't get to score. And I was just like, the one, the first time I was being a little risky, you know, trying to go a little too deep for that, uh, the high point uh, artifact. But mm -hmm. then the next game, I was like really conservative about it. And I'm like, let me just get this and get out. And I still couldn't because it was just like the luck of the draw. You know, it was just bad luck. And that kind of like made me feel sour. But overall, not really. Like, I don't think... I can't think of a gaming experience um, that has like brought me, you know, made me feel not great. Mm -hmm. um, like regardless of the theme. Yeah. I can't even, I, I can't really. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> okay. All right. That's not that's yet. Fair. At least not, not yet, yet. At least. Now we were talking, we were talking about, um, we were talking about Academy games and some of the games that they came out with but that 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 freedom that uh, the freedom game is actually part of the birth of american series okay and yes hopefully mo will spell it right next time <laughs> but that's okay he's mo so so, so what other game would you recommend me I checking think, out next i think 1775 rebellion is very good um okay uh, there's 1754, which is also great. As a matter of fact, everybody's putting them in the chat here. Uh, 1776, nice. uh, 1775 Rebellion, which is really, really a great game in that series. Uh, 1754. Uh, the Viking game I thought was good. I just... It's not one of my favorites out of all that. Uh, boy, gotta, what, what was the first one? What was 1775 Rebellion? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, seventeen okay. seventy-five. So I did. I I am aware of that, and I'm very interested in playing it. And I almost bought it like multiple times, but then I'm like, I need to stop spending money on board, <laughs> you know. And you I, think, you never I think I think it just kind of it just got cut from the list. But um, I will reprioritize that. <laughs> uh, they have Strike of the Eagle, which is not part of it. Uh, okay. The Invasion of Canada, eighteen twelve. Yes, I've um, heard that one. That is a phenomenal game. Okay. A phenomenal game. I compare that one. Um, one one game that I like from Compass Games, uh, Quebec. Oh God, I wish I could remember what year it was uh, that they had, <laughs> but um, it, it, it it's called uh, Quebec, and okay. that game is so simple. You could just play it by yourself, and it's such a great experience. You have the same feel with the invasion of Canada and it just, just, just phenomenal, phenomenal war games. Yeah. Uh, I will, I will put those back on my list. Cause yeah, yeah. I, I, I was like really close to getting them at some point, but I forget like whatever, you know, so many games. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it, here. Oh, I love oh, 878 Vikings. Plus for one for, for me game. out of everything. I mean, I, I, I love the Viking game. But I think out of all of it and, and the experiences that I had, I found that one to be my least favorite out of the group. But I love them all. Okay. If that makes sense. Somebody, yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. Somebody notify Uwe. Get Candace some, some Academy games. <laughs> nice. 
nice. Thanks, Uve, Trevor. if you're watching, get a hold of Candace. Get a hold I'll of all play them. Yeah, I know you'll definitely play them. But it, it's it's definitely definitely fantastic. Funny, I just bought uh, I just bought up 1878 uh, 70, 78. 78 Vikings because we are watching The Last Kingdom. Have you watched that? Oh, one? that's a Netflix series. Yes. Um, I might have seen one episode, but no, I haven't gotten into it yet. Mm -hmm. is, is it is it worth checking out, guys? Yeah, uh, if Herman's uh, Her Herman's uh, raving about it, you're gonna okay. absolutely love it. All right, thanks, Herman. I'll put that on and, the watch list. And one of my favorite games, <laughs> but I, I'll I'll be honest with you, you need a few players uh, to play this. And I have everything for this game. Is Mar Nostrum Empires? It is such a fascinating, fascinating game because. <laughs> it, it, you're 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 basically competing for goods and stuff like that, and you know you could be the Roman Empire or you could be Greece or yeah. you know and, and anywhere in that time period, and you are you're you're moving your pieces. You don't want to fight anybody, but you kind of okay. want to do it because there's a way you can win <laughs> economically, but you want to. Oh, I'm just going to take this little bit of land. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to get into this huge battle because what you're trying to do also is economically stranglehold everybody. Gotcha. And it's, it's such a phenomenal. Uh, I have the huge <sighs> map for it. I have the, the poker chip type of uh, resources. Okay. Okay. I painted all the minis and because. It sounds cool. Oh, oh my God. If you get a chance to get that. Okay. I'm telling you. Is right it now. is it out of print or is it still available? Uh, I think you can get it from Academy of Games. Uh, okay. You know what? I'll reach out to Uve and see what we can do. I, I'll see what we can do. I got to take a sip of water here. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Rob. So, so what's your what's your favorite coin game? Oh, jeez. Uh, you know, it, it, for the longest time, it was the Afghanistan one. Um, God, it's escaping me. The Distant name plane. It. Distant plane. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they had the uh, the uh, British one that came out. Uh, Liberty or death, or yeah. um, uh, or Liberty the, the one that's the hard one, the uh, really the, hard one. Yeah, the uh, pen dragon. Pen, pen dragon. Pen dragon. Um, and that kind of, I, I kind of. I kind of started going towards the pen dragon a bit. Okay. I love liberty and death. Yeah. But I always come back to distant plane, and and, and it's such a mm. funny thing. The only one I don't have, believe it or not, is the one that's sitting on your shelf. I Cuba do not Libre. have. I do not have Cuba Libre, and I can kick <sighs> myself. I have oh, an opportunity man. to get it. I have to get it. To do complete you, the series. Do you have you have Gandhi? Yes. How's yes. that one? I liked it. <laughs> Hesitantly, he says. <laughs> no, I liked it. I found it very fascinating. I I was sucked into the theme of it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I, I I really think it's one of those things that I was just completely blown away by. Um, but when I start thinking of uh, of of those coin games, I, I I always lean back to Pendragon and Distant, Distant Plane because it was just so you know people don't realize how under how fascinating Afghanistan is, how it's yeah. broken up into all those different tribes, yeah. and how we're in there, and how everything is run off you know of course the poppy seeds and uh, you know the 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 income is basically the drugs and everything and how everybody kind of twists and turns in it yeah uh, it's just really just a colonial twilight is another great coin game oh and that's the two player one uh yeah. but but it's very easy to solo oh okay. matter of fact matter of fact mo put it in there we're gonna put mo up there Let's check out you gotta love mo 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 is probably thanks mo. if you if you get a chance Okay. Very and, easy to and, solo. I need that. Yeah. But if you want to see a couple of channels that you're really going to pick up on some things. Okay. Yeah. And, and we were talking about a little off the, off the air. Uh, um, 
you want to check out Mo's game table. Okay. okay. He does fantastic unboxings and things like that. So you're going to cool. get a feel for what you get. Then a couple of other people that you're really going to want to take a look at is he's in, he's in here and I'm going to embarrass him yet again. Is <laughs> the rough swordsman's war gamer. Okay. I've, I've watched tons and tons of videos and a couple of my favorite people uh, and, and and one that recently that i really got to know and get as a matter of fact i got i forgot i got to get a hold of him because he wants to learn how to paint uh gimpy gamer who is a former marine who uh -huh. was injured um in, in in combat uh but he does some of the most instructional and most unbelievable videos that you'll ever see and he'll sell you the game without trying to sell you the game <laughs> love it okay and the rough swordsman now i i, I really want to preface this and it's not because he's in here yeah but but every time i've ever watched anything he done the excitement that he has the way he explains things and the way you feel like you're there playing with him it's set it's something i can't duplicate that's awesome. Okay. And I, I think it, these are a couple of things that now you've got your homework. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so when you and I do something either next week or the following week. Oh, yeah. The first thing I'm going to go, did you watch any of those stuff? I oh, yeah. And, and you know, and, and, you and, know and, and, I and, will, and, too. And I'm going to be taking notes. <laughs> and this is this is exactly why I rarely have been watching like Netflix and Hulu. It's because like I'm always watching game videos. Oh, God. <laughs> you, know, you know, you just can't. You, you can't stop. And you know, there's such a world out there. And 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 and, and again, I want to go back to us meeting together, oh, yes. and how you had such a fascination for history, for war gaming, and all these things, and you yeah. wanted to absorb and learn more. You know, oh, yeah. you weren't just a, a person that that came in and said, "Hey, you know, I play, uh, you know, Euro games, and that's it." And that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you had this just wide open enthusiasm, and it was very contagious, and it was something Thanks. that stuck with me because, out of the entire retreat, mm -hmm. my, uh, and, and I'm not saying this because you're here. My favorite <laughs> moment was meeting you, and and you got me excited about things again. Oh, but, that's cool. Thanks, Rob. You know, because you know, you know, we we were there for like four days, and yeah, smashing their heads together. And you're kind of sitting there and you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, some of it flying over <laughs> your head and this and the other. And I, I was like new kid on the block too. New kid on the so. block. <laughs> but, you, you know, we're, we're all trying to problem solve some things. Yeah. But that dinner and when we were done and you and I sat for 25, 30, 30 minutes and yeah. we talked, I went, wow, wow. Yeah. Now I know why they brought her in here because, you know, when you think of Board Game Geek, you know, you look at the lineup of all stars that are on there. You know, you yeah. th you're talking Rodney, Chaz, the Murph guys, uh, you know, Beth. What an inspiration yeah. she is. Yeah. Uh, all the a fantastic leader. You can't you can't forget Lincoln and Nikki. Nikki, who yeah. everybody thinks doesn't say anything. <laughs> I love but Nikki. If, but if you get her going, she don't shut up. <laughs> And, 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 I, and I love that about her. Yeah. I, I, she comes across as this nice, quiet, little demur, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> and she gets a head of steam on her, and, and, and you better look out. And then, you know, you can't forget the Murph brothers and, and, and Aldi who runs. And then the people behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, you know, I said it during the retreat. We are we are a team it's a of all great team. Yeah. yeah, it's a fantastic team, and all the you know the enthusiasm and yeah. everything that you bring to the table with you know with Steffi. You know, I don't want to forget her. You know, yeah. who I was laughing the entire time with. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really a great thing, and, and yeah, and the little things that we do for each other is I I think it's just completely yeah, it's uh, a great phenomenal. team. Yep. Hi, listening from the start, want to say Kansas is a great guest. So positive, oh, thank you. interesting, enthusiastic, <laughs> awesome hair, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Godzilla lover. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and she's one of my favorites. Why? Because she's a Godzilla lover. <laughs> you ever saw her collection of Godzilla stuff? It was like really? Uh, Gimpy does great how-to boot camp videos. Okay. Makes it easy to jump into games. So like I was saying, if there's Gimpy, something yeah. that you want to do, 
and and you haven't even you haven't even cracked the lock and load stuff that's out there. Oh no, uh, David Heath. Um, uh, you know, you got Compass Games, which has a lot of phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. Games. Um, of course, you, you know, you've dipped your toes into the GMT world. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, another one is Worthington Games, which are nice, simple mm -hmm. games. If you if if your boyfriend is not a heavy war gamer, mm -hmm. they're light enough where you get the historic feel to it yeah but it's not overloading him with rules where i Got know it. you yeah you just you want to absorb it all and the more Absolutely. complicated the, the <laughs> more you're in yeah yeah totally now he he does love star wars so we have played star wars rebellion oh yeah <laughs> so, so you want to talk about star wars war games he's totally totally in for that um, but I, I wanted to say too, before we jump topics from the retreat, another right. awesome moment that I um, especially remember sharing with you mm -hmm. was when we were moving all the shelves um, for the, the game library into the, the warehouse. And you were just like showing me some of these old school, which I think are all these games, like these yeah. old school, old school games. And I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Because and, and nobody has ever been there, and I'm going to get to some of these questions because I want to make sure I get everybody's stuff in. Um, the, the, um, Board Game Geek has a, a humongous warehouse, yeah. and and it's amazing how everything is run by Jeff Anderson and all the people there. Yeah. Their shipping department, you know, we got to see this new building, Super and cool. and how we get prepared for a convention. There's so much work that goes into it, but the way they have it is so unique because they just have totes and totes of clear <laughs> totes. So you could see like everything from their library and then all the other stuff that they pulled from the library. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And I'm looking there and I'm going, you see that game? That game came out in 1970. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, talking to you, I'm going, yeah. that is a fantastic war game. Yeah. You need to get that. Yeah. Or, oh my God, they don't want that anymore, do they? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were just standing there. And and, and, and it's kind of like it, the only thing I could compare it to is when you have, like, um, back in the, the old days, you used to buy tapes of all the old trailers or all the old TV commercials. And you go, Oh, I remember that commercial. That, that was my, that was my favorite cereal or something like that. Or that was my favorite. Or, you know, or you see something for your favorite cartoons and stuff like yeah. that. And I'd yeah. watch back like all the old fifties and sixties and seventies stuff cool. and, and look at just looking there and going, Oh God, I remember when that came out. Yeah. Oh God. How does he have one of those? <laughs> And you just sitting there wide eyed going, like, really? What? I need yeah. to get that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. That was cool. Uh Worthington, I just mentioned Worthington. As a matter of fact, uh, Mo brought it up. Worthington are really okay. easy to get non-war gamers to play. But okay. you're a war gamer. I I I think you will really like the games because of the historical value and, yeah. and and the passion that's put into it. Yeah. You know, one thing I can say, and, and, and one thing that you're going to learn, even as you go further down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. is that you have these companies that, you know, a lot of them don't do it full time. Okay. They yeah. do it part time. They do it. Some of them do it out of their gra garage, but the one thing that you will find, and it's very true about war gamers, is that they are very passionate okay and the people that design the games are passionate about a particular error and what they do and they put their heart and soul into it yeah where you know we're in some other bo board games sure i'm not gonna say what <laughs> it's well this is the hot theme how can yeah. we make, how can yeah. we make money at it right where in this particular little world okay which is part of the overall thing, right? This is a this is a world where you are going to find that okay. Well, nobody's done anything about uh, you know this particular battle in 
you know, 1911 or something. Right. And I'm going to cover it and I'm going to research all this history and I'm going to build something around it. And mechan and then you start awesome. to learn things and you start to feel the passion and you want to share it with other people. These coin yeah. games do a lot of those things and you're going to, you're going to find that as well. Let's yeah. Get, let's get to a question here. Cause we're an hour almost went by. Can you believe it? Oh, good question, Trevor. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I actually have, oh, why can't I find them right now? I do. I have uh, Escape from Hades. I got I got uh, Agricola. Um, is a Master of Britain. And then um, Meltwater. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I haven't played Meltwater yet, but um, actually when I was at Gamma, uh, Clay from Capstone uh, highly recommended that, and I even got the plexiglass. Like I, I'm, I'm ready, but <laughs> but it's just like you know, it's it's so hard um, with you know the pandemic mm -hmm. because I have I have a good chunk of friends who love these games and would have you know would be down to like spend the time playing them. Um, but I just can't always get them to the table because not, not because Matt's not always down to play, but it's just like, he's busy with work and side hustle stuff too. So mm -hmm. um, it's just hard, but yeah, I can't wait to like get, get together with people who are also like passionate about these kind of games. I already have somebody lined up for uh, labyrinth too. <laughs> Holland spiel is another great suggestion. They said, Yes. And, 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 you know, and, 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 and here's some of the things, you know, when you start to know some of the companies, like, you, you, you know, you get to, you know, call them out, Tom and Mary, yeah. Grant, Grant and Mike at Worthington. That's how close knit everybody. I love it. It's, becomes. It's really and, cool, yeah. and it's something that you're really going to love. Uh, Tom and Mary are two of the nicest people. And, and, and when you get channels saying that, it's absolutely fantastic. Let's see. Hans Spiel, love yes. Agricola, Master of Britain. The best Agricola game on <laughs> the market. Right. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get into the other one. No. <laughs> the farming one. <laughs> uh, um, oh, and I, yeah, I can't forget my boy, Mark Walker. I and Flying Pig games. Games. You know, I could sit here and name off so many different companies. And, and, and if you ever saw a Mark Walker Flying Pig game, first of all, they take up the entire table. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. It's not wasted space. It has this unbelievable beauty to it because these maps are so well done. Yeah. And you open them up and then all of a sudden you're just sucked into it, like Stalingrad, you know, the battle Ooh. for Stalingrad or yeah. or the Pacific Theater, um, you know, West and East um East uh battles and things like that from World War II. I mean, just yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal things. And let me tell you, flying pig, uh I, I can't speak any more highly about. Uh, I'll more. check it out. And yeah, no, yeah, yeah. you've got all the, you've got all these things. The problem is, you know, you're you're going to want to buy every single thing. That's yeah. that's, that's yeah. the problem with it. <laughs> I uh, need to just I I need to just get more things to the table that I have also. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do want to buy all of these. Uh, let's see here. There, uh, somebody talking about uh, there's a great underground company called Dark City Games. They mostly make games with modern rules from old school, the fantasy trip. That's for yesterday's show. That's RPG uh, World. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, talk, we talk about RBGs uh, uh, on Tuesdays. They have a war game series that they just started too. Um, I believe that the oh, uh, the combat okay. boost series currently Battle of the Bulge is available. And having played it, I can oh. say it is excellent. Cool. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay, uh, here's one. I am interested in Versailles 1919, but plan to wait for some reviews. Very interested in the theme. What do you think? I actually. Um... I just covered in the BGG news um, a couple of new GMT games, and Versailles 1919 was one of them. And it was it, it was one that I went in um, not really sure, like you know, feeling either way about it. But after like kind of like digging in and like researching it a bit, and then watching some videos, it's on pre-order with Imperial Struggle. 
Um, <laughs> I, I love, I love um, those games, those like political games where you're, you know, influencing this and that. Um, so I am anticipating that I'm going to like really like that one, but yeah, I haven't played it yet. And matter of fact, Mark got a chance to play it. I mean, Mo got a chance to play it. Uh, oh. was great. Played it with Mark at WBC. Interesting oh, cool. game. And it can be played solo. Love it. Love it. And I, and I just got hip to WBC because I kept hearing people, uh, talking about it. I'm like, what is, what is WBC? <laughs> You know, it's it's a funny thing, Trevor. I'm 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 partially deaf in this ear, so I can't hear myself talk. <laughs> so when I try to say things, I can't hear myself silence things out. So I butcher everything. That's something that's been well known on the channel. So <laughs> it's a first try. Yeah. Rob, Rob, Rob. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob. So thank you for correcting me. I hope you feel much better about it. And uh, now, <laughs> now you can sleep at night. <laughs> But I, I, this ear is 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 just about gone. So I really have a tough time. Uh, but I don't worry about it. I still go on camera and I butcher things and who cares? Hey, it's me. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's you. We love you. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, the most unprofessional you're, you're channel. Genuine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and look, you're already getting invites. Come to WBC, Candice, we will right. game and have fun. And yeah, that's one that you definitely got to check out. And it, it's in Pennsylvania, right? That is correct. That is correct. It, well, you, you, could, you could stop home for a little I'm bit. From. Yep. Give everybody <laughs> a hug and a high five. And yep. And, they, <laughs> yep. and is, it, is, it, is it all war games there or is it like? What's that? Uh, WBC is it like all war games it's, it's or is it a mixture of everything? It, it, it's the world championships of everything, and uh, it, it really, uh, it, it's really, it's really fantastic. All right, next it, time it, it happens, yeah. Rob, let's it's, go. It, it, there's a yeah, oh, definitely. I was planning on going this year, but I've got I've got reasons to make sure I go next year because boy, I'm, I'm I I know everybody's so excited to see me when I go there. Yeah, yeah. I'm I might have to put that on my calendar. Yeah, no, definitely. We yeah. will go and we will have a blast, I promise you. The, the focus, the, the the real focus is war games, and that's where everybody gets together and meets and kind of hashes everything out. And it's yeah. really, it's really gonna it, it's really awesome. fantastic. And I think you'll just have a bunch of days where you will just get sucked in and and we may never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, Thanks, well, well, there we go. I mean, we we killed an hour, and I think we oh, still wow. have. Mil you know, we didn't even get to half the things we wanted to talk about, but that that's okay. That's how it works at War and Pieces. We just open it up, and we we really talk with everybody in the in the chat, and and have a good time. And and Trevor, you know, I love you. I mean, you've been part of the channel forever. I've just given you a hard time. <laughs> but but uh, no. Um, Again, you know, it, it just flies on the show and, and it goes yeah. by. And I, I want to thank everybody for stopping in. And again, I want to congratulate you on becoming the newest member of Board Game Geek. And I, I'm, 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 I, I'm just so proud not only to have you on the team because I think you just add so much to it, but the best part about it is your friend. And, and yeah. me, uh, I, you know, uh, I, I don't have a lot of friends, but you are definitely a friend of mine. And Thanks, you Rob. somebody that you and I are going to be doing a lot of cool stuff together. And they don't know what we have planned. I know. We have some things planned. We have some things planned that you'll yeah. be seeing here on Rob's Tabletop World and BGG. All right. We said it all. I don't think we could. Well, no, we didn't say it all. But I don't we think said, we, we said pretty, some things. We said something. <laughs> Oh, we're definitely going to have you back on because we're going to have cool. some other people on and I want you to be here because I want to get your perspective on some things. With other people. Yeah, and we, we've got so many things planned going forward. It's awesome. just going to be fun. This is what War and Peace is all about, giving you a different aspect and different perspectives of all the things war gaming and gaming in general and life. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we do it good. So, Candace, say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks for all the questions, comments, welcomes. Really appreciate it. Um, definitely going to check out all the recommendations. I'm going to have to like rewatch the video because I wasn't taking notes. But Rob, you're awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Uh, hang on for a second. And Gut Bomb, thank you for the $10. You know, Debbie's all that. We can't leave now. 
You can't what, give what? Every time somebody donates some money, oh. a dollar goes into my granddaughter's uh, college fund. Oh, so, nice. Well, but 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 it's actually Godzilla <laughs> that comes take it. <laughs> Thank awesome. you, Bob. You're the man. Awesome. All right. All right, everybody. For your old pal, Rob, Godzilla, and the great Candace. Until next time, it's your old pal, Rob. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>